Hi everybody, so today we're going to be talking about how thyroid hormone increases in metabolism. So the, let's go ahead and get started. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what normally happens in a cell. And then we're going to look at what happens when you have an increase in thyroid hormone. So this is going to be a tissue cell in here. This will be my plasma membrane. This is going to be the bloodstream. So in the bloodstream, we're going to have sodium. And the sodium is going to come out. Now this isn't under normal circumstances, okay? So here's what happens is in the plasma membrane, well, first, we have more sodium outside of the tissue than inside. So in the plasma membrane, we actually have something we call leak channels or ion channels. And what's going to happen is my sodium is going to enter into the inside of the cell. Now, the next thing that's going to happen is normally inside a cell too, we are going to have potassium. So here's my potassium. And, be, and there's more potassium inside the cell than outside. So what's gonna happen is as the sodium comes in, this potassium is going to leak out. So now I'm gonna have potassium out there. Well, now we gotta put these back to normal, right? I gotta take this sodium and I gotta move it out and I gotta take this potassium, this potassium and move it back in. So how do we do that? In the plasma membrane, you have something that we call ATP, uh, sodium potassium ATPase. So this is the sodium potassium ATPase. You might also notice as the sodium potassium pump. So what's gonna happen now? Well, like I said, we have sodium inside here that we need to move out. And then we're gonna have potassium outside here that we need to move in. So the sodium potassium ATPase is gonna take this sodium and it's going to move it out. And it's gonna take this potassium and it's going to move it in. And this is under normal circumstances. Now, because they're going against their chemical gradient, right? We have more sodium out here than in here. So to pump this out, and the fact that we have more potassium in here than out here, and to pump this in is going to require energy. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna take ATP and convert it to ADP, which is going to release energy to make this happen. Now that's under normal circumstances, okay? So let's talk about now what thyroid hormone does. So if you recall, thyroid hormone can be in two forms. We have T3 and basically the inactive form, which is T4. A lot of the T4 is going to be converted to T3 in the bloodstream. Whatever is not converted in the bloodstream is going to come down into the cell and then be converted to T3 or bond with a protein until it's needed. So here's what's going to happen now. The T3 is going to have two different effects, or the th thyroid hormone is going to have two different effects. One thing it's going to do is it's going to make these more le leaky to sodium. Okay, so now what's going to happen is it's going to increase the amount of sodium that comes into the cell. Right? Now, if I increase the amount of sodium coming into the cell, that means I'm also going to increase the amount of potassium leaving the cell, right? So I'm gonna increase this here also. And then, so I got an increase in my potassium leaving the cell. Now, because I have more potassium and more sodium, my ATP, my sodium potassium ATP ACE has to work harder, which is gonna require more ATP. The other thing this is going to do though, before we'll come back to this in a minute. The other thing this is going to do is it's going to increase the number of ion channels I have on the membrane also. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. And if you recall, we have our nucleus in here. And in the nucleus, we're gonna have our ATP. I'm sorry, we're gonna have our DNA, right? And then I'm not gonna draw it, but if you recall, we also had the thyroid hormone receptor on here, also known as TR. So what's gonna happen now is my T3 can come down on here and it's gonna to bind to that receptor and it's going to have, what it's going to do is two different things. The first thing it can do, like we said, is it can create mRNA and the mRNA can go out to a ribosome. This is my ribosome. Right? And then what it's going to do is it's going to make more sodium and potassium ion channels. So it's gonna make more sodium and potassium ion channels. So if I get more sodium potassium ion channels, also known as leak channels, if I get more of those, 
Let's put those right over here. Right, so now these are gonna come up to here. If I get more of those, now even more sodium and potassium can leak in. And out. Okay, so now we're increasing that. So, so now how are we gonna deal with all this extra? We got it where it's more leaky here and we're also increasing the number of ion channels. So what's gonna happen now? We need to make more of this sodium potassium ATP ACE, right? So what's gonna happen also is this T3 is gonna come in and it's also gonna make messenger RNA and it's gonna be the same as here. This is gonna go up to a ribosome, right? So, so this is gonna go out to a ribosome and what the ribosome is going to do is it's going to translate this and now it's going to make sodium potassium ATPase. And then that's also going to go into my plasma membrane. So let's put that right over here. So here's my sodium potassium ATPase again. Okay, and now this is gonna start pumping my, my sodium out, right? It's gonna start pumping sodium out and it's gonna start pumping potassium back in, just like we saw over here, right? So it's gonna, it's gonna be doing that. So now though, this also needs to use ATP, right? So it's gonna take ATP, it needs energy to do this and make it into ADP, right? So how does it do this? Well, what makes ATP in a cell? It's the mitochondria, right? So now, here's what's going to happen. Let's say this is my mitochondria right here, right? And here's my mitochondria, it's working its rear end off, trying to make more ATP. It says, hey, we need to do something. So what the hormones will also do is they will increase the size of the mitochondria. Okay, they're gonna increase the size of the mitochondria. Let's go like this so you can see the bottom of that. But it's gonna increase the size of the mitochondria, right? And the thing it's gonna do is it's also gonna increase the number of the mitochondria. So here's another one, and here's another one, right? And now all of these mitochondria can start making ATP. So now we're gonna have the mitochondria making ATP, right? So this is gonna be making ATP that these can use, right? Now, that's gonna have two effects. One, because it's making, it well first, because these are working harder, they are going to increase the amount of heat in the body. So they're gonna increase the amount of heat. They're also going to increase the oxygen consumption. Okay, so they're also gonna increase the, the amount of oxygen consumption that the cell is doing, okay? The one last thing about this is However much I increase my metabolism, that's how much I increase my mitochondria surface area. So if I increase my metabolism by 60%, I am going to increase, or your body's going to increase the mitochondrial area by 60%. If this went up by 70%, this is gonna go up by 70%. So that's it for how the thyroid hormone increases metabolism. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe button. And we'll catch you next time. Thank you so much for watching.